The 2021 season was one of the most chaotic in recent memory. For starters, stadiums were only 25% full for the majority of the year. The Toronto Blue Jays played in two minor league stadiums for more than half the season. Shohei Otani had one of, if not the greatest single season display in MLB history. And Yermin Mercedes took the lead by storm in April, only to fizzle out in the following months, announce his retirement via Instagram, then unretire the following day again via Instagram. This is his story of his incredible rise to fame, life back in the minors, and his disappearance from the MLB. At the start of 2021, Yermin only had one career at bat in the major leagues, which was just a simple ground ball to second base. At this point, he was 27 years old, typically a time in which most players hang up the cleats and pursue other careers. But Yermin was persistent and had some impressive seasons in the minor leagues. For example, in 2019, he took part in 95 games across AA and AAA, hit 23 home runs, knocked in 80 RBIs, and had a slash line including an OPS almost reaching 1,000. All of this hard work paid off on November 21st, 2019, when he was officially added to the 40-man roster, which ensures a spring training invite to big league camp. That's a huge accomplishment in itself to make it to spring training, but it doesn't ensure anything. Every year your team has these invitees that will never even step foot on the MLB diamond. It's basically just a private tryout with no guarantees. And Yermin understood that. After all, he had been to big league camp the previous four seasons and had nothing to show for it. But this time it was different. In the 47 at bats he received, he had a respectable batting average and on base percentage. And while he didn't hit for much power with just a 340 slugging, he was very clutch, knocking in eight runs during this time, earning him the right to the opening day roster as he beat out longtime MLB vet Jonathan Lucroy as the last catcher selected by the team. And on April 2nd, in the team's second game of the season, is where he got his first start in the major leagues, and he wasted no time in making a name for himself by going five for five with one double, four singles, and four RBIs in the team's emphatic 12-8 triumph over the Los Angeles Angels. This display earned him the title of being the first player in the modern era to go 5 for 5 in his first career start. And the records didn't stop there. In fact, the following day, he started the game 3 for 3, including his first major league home run, making him the first player in the modern era to begin a season with hits in his first 8 at bats. And while his streak did come to an end in the 8th inning when he was retired by Tony Watson on a 3 2 count, his hot streak didn't. Over the next few weeks, he was a mainstay in the dominant Chicago White Sox lineup and had other remarkable games such as his 3-for-5 performance on April 5th, 2-for-4 on April 8th, and then in his next game on the 11th, he was walked three times in four plate appearances. Which means it only took seven games before teams stopped wanting to pitch to him. But could you blame them? After all, from a weeks full of games, he had three doubles, two homers, and seven RBIs, along with a slash line that included an over 500 average and an almost 1500 OPS. In comparison to the rest of the MLB, that was the highest batting average by 55 points, had the highest on base percentage by 23, and was the third highest OPS only behind Byron Buxton and JD Martinez, who also enjoyed impressive starts. It was at this time social media and the baseball world would not stop talking about your mean Mercedes. In fact, I was at Fenway Park the first week of the season, and the group of people next to me could not stop talking about how he came from nowhere and was lighting up the league. And they were right. After doing some digging, I found out that Yermin was playing for teams such as the White Sands Pupfish, Douglas Diablos, and San Angelo Colts. Those are teams I had never ever heard of before doing all my research, and I wouldn't be surprised if you had also never heard of them. But Yermin came from there, being one of the few to graduate from these ranks in the minor leagues all the way to the majors. And now at 28 years old, he was finally enjoying his breakthrough. Over the next few weeks, he continued to provide a hot bat for the Chicago White Sox, who finished the month of April with a solid 14-11 record, only a game and a half back of the Kansas City Royals. As for Yermin, he finished the month of April with 5 doubles, 5 home runs, and 17 RBIs, as well as an over 400 average and OBP, a 659 slugging, and an OPS topping 1100. When we look at MLB wide production, we can see he was up there with the best in the league, trailing Mike Trout by 10 points in batting average, 4th in OBP again behind the league leader Mike Trout, and 5th in OPS only behind Mike Trout, JD Martinez, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Ronald Acuna Jr. That's great company to be alongside. And in terms of the Chicago White Sox, this month was one of the most impressive in team history. Yes, team history that goes back all the way to 1901. 
because for a man who had very little chance to make the team out of the spring, had over 2300 plate appearances in the minors, and was the third catcher on the opening day depth chart, he managed to find himself among the best in the league in many key offensive categories throughout the first month of the season, something I'm not sure many people had on their MLB bingo cards. But unfortunately, following his 0-4 for with two strikeout performance on May 1st, he began his decline. Pitchers started to figure him out more and more, and his strikeout percentage rose dramatically from 13.6% in April to 18.9% in May to 20.6% in June. It was also at this time where every single number in his slash line dropped dramatically, including just a 159 average in June with just a 411 OPS. That figure was bottom of the league for players with at least 60 plate appearances during the month, and it was by a pretty comfortable margin. Because of this, he was sent down to the minor leagues, and upon receiving the news, he broke down. He didn't know how to grasp with going from being at the highest of highs back to the lowest of lows, which was the minors. But after sleeping on it, he came back the next day and announced that he would not be retiring and would continue his baseball journey with the hopes of returning to the MLB. And to his credit, he did. In 2022, after getting claimed off waivers by the San Francisco Giants, he featured in 31 games for the club. It was nowhere near the level of production he had in that magical month with the White Sox, but he did have some memorable moments such as his performance against the Arizona Diamondbacks on July 12th when he had an RBI double to break the deadlock in the first inning of the game, and then a home run in the second to extend the lead 7 to nothing. But it wasn't enough to stick with the club and he was later opted into the minor leagues, and in the offseason he could not find another job in the US, so he opted to sign in the Mexican league where he put up uninspiring numbers including more strikeouts and games before ultimately being released by the club on May 15th. Then, in the Dominican Winter League, he played for the Toros alongside other known MLB players such as Jaymer Candelario, Victor Robles, and Jorge Mateo. And in his 26 games for the club, he put up shocking numbers with his 170 average, 272 OBP, 250 slugging, and 522 OPS. At the time of recording this video, I could not find if he is set to be playing anywhere in 2024, so if you somehow know, please tell me in the comments. But regardless of if he finds a place to play, it's safe to say his time in the MLB is over. And if so, then he has an impressive story to look back on. Because not only did he prove everyone wrong by making the Sox his big league roster at age 28, but he also helped them massively throughout the first month of the season en route to taking home the AL Rookie of the Month award. And us fans got to witness one of the craziest single month performances from a man once labeled as a career minor leaguer. That wraps it up for this video, but before you go, let me know in the comments your favorite memory from your Means Insane month. And if you enjoyed, please make sure to hit the like button as it helps the channel out a bunch to reach more like-minded people, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more awesome baseball content every single week.